Hey guys, and welcome to Petrolped. Now look in the comment section of any of my electric car reviews, and there's a common theme. You will see comments in there a lot about batteries. Things like, ah, but the batteries will be dead in two or three years. The efficiency is gonna die just like my smartphone. Or you shouldn't charge an electric car up to 100%. Or you shouldn't use fast charging. It deteriorates the battery. Oh, what about the long-term cost? of electric motor maintenance. How much is it gonna to cost to change out my battery pack? Every single video has comments like this. So I wanted to bust some of those myths because there's a lot of misinformation out there, a lot of misunderstanding. So I've come all the way to Newtown in Wales, back to electric classic cars. I haven't been here since we finished filming season two of Vintage Voltage. I've come back to see my old mate Moggy and the team at Electric Classic Cars. It's great to meet up with everybody. But of all the people I know, Moggy's the guy that can answer those questions. Moggy is the guy that can bust those myths. So let's head on inside out of this horrible wet weather and see if we can do a bit of myth busting, shall we? To be back <laughs> good to see you again mate now we were working out i reckon it's been a good 18 months since i've been here don't ask me right i don't even remember what i had for breakfast let alone the last a, time you a, were back. a lot has happened since we finished filming series two of vintage voltage you guys go from strength to strength well we, we keep ourselves busy. you've got some epic cars in here um cool cars aren't they most epic of them all being your funk up that is ridiculous oh yeah uh we still haven't named that yet death trap i want to name it but yeah. uh the family doesn't want to name it death trap the coffin yeah. well yeah well thousand kilos thousand horsepower four-wheel drive four-wheel drive yeah. 1150 newton meters yeah you're mental i saw you trying to squeeze yourself into it down at goodwood mate yeah. so a lot of people have tried to squeeze themselves into it they've got race license well, look, it's, meant for you, it's not meant for me i know it's uh, anybody over five foot eleven will struggle in it and that's by design. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've traveled all this way because I need your help. Go on then, what do you want there? I am fed up whenever I review an electric car, comments about batteries. Stop reviewing electric cars then. <laughs> well, you know, you've got to keep a balance. And, and a lot of the comments are, I just want to kind of try and bust some myths. Oh really. yeah, go I on get, You must get the same thing on your oh, channel we as well. Oh, get it all the time. Um, before we even get going, I'll put links to Electric Classic Cars YouTube channel and all the socials. Make sure you give them a follow. If you want to know more about what they're doing in here, you don't need to watch Vintage Voltage anymore. You just tune into your YouTube, YouTube channel. channel Electric Classic wicked. Cars. Yeah. So the, the, let's bust some myths. Go on in. And I've got, I've got a list of things because this, this oh. guy is the guy I know who knows more about this stuff than anybody. Oh, you're lining me up for a fall now, aren't I you? I know, I know. <laughs> and we're right. So let's do batteries. We have... This is where you assemble your battery packs. Yeah, this I'm area. actually quite privileged to be allowed in here. Well, I'm not allowed to touch anything. Well, you're safe because, because all the terminals dangerous. are uh, covered yeah. and this hasn't actually gone live proper yet. So uh, you, you're safe, but don't touch anything no, just, uh, just in case. You could hurt yourself with these. Well, th this is a uh, rear pack out of the Porsche 912, which is yes. also 911 pack as well, but with that 912 over there, this is the rear pack out of that. And that's 27 odd kilowatt hours just in the rear pack. Wow. And there's another one exactly the same goes in the front it's quite dinky it's quite dinky yeah right. so here's the thing so first question then go on in i buy a new electric car is there, is there a prize if you get them all right yeah definitely <laughs> definitely first, first question for 10. so i buy a new electric car and the battery starts to lose um, it's efficiency, it's effective, it's a bit like your smartphone. Right. So after two years, the battery's not going to be able to hold as much charge, your range will decrease, and after three or four years, the battery's going to be knackered, and you'll have to buy a new one, and they cost lots of money. Okay, so that is what's called battery degradation. Yep. And uh, yeah, you're correct. Batteries um, degrade, if you like, over their lifetime and their use, if you like. And but, charge cycles. And charge cycles, yeah. yeah. So well, that's what I mean by use. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But it's nowhere near as bad as, you know, media makes out. Bear in mind, media and news now is driven by clicks and views, not facts. Really? It's a shocker, I know. No, I didn't. But <laughs> literally, if there's a bad news story about something, they'll push it and then they'll get views from it and on it goes and goes viral. Happy news story about batteries. 
hardly ever gets any views. So that's the first thing to um, understand is, you know, news and media works off sensationalist stuff now, yeah. clicks and views, not facts. Okay. But coming back to uh, battery degradation. So what happens is over the lifetime of a battery, the, the ceiling, if you like, comes down. So as you charge it and use it and charge it and use it, it doesn't quite get to 100% as it used to do years ago. But when I say it's not as bad as people make out, it, and people can you know, Google this as well if they like, go out and Google Tesla battery degradation, for instance, and you'll find that after around about 200,000 miles, you'll be down to around about 90% of the original battery capacity that you had when you started. 200,000 miles? Yes, which is more... How many people do 200,000 miles in their car? I know that that is more than the average lifetime of most um, internal combustion engine yeah, cars. absolutely. I think I'm, that's I'm, around about 180, but... I think the right. most I've ever done on a car, I did like 100,000 miles in a, in a petrol car once. But bear in mind, the electric car is still working. Yeah, yeah. All you've got now is a range that is 90% of what you had when you started. Yeah. Now, there are outliers, there are some that'll be better than that, some that'll be worse than that. Yeah. But I think where the, some of the bad stories have happened, bear in mind, you know, news items will pick the worst case scenario and then yeah. push that. But the older generation cars that didn't have um, thermal management on their batteries, and I'll come to that in a minute, the older generation electric cars like first generation Nissan Leafs, Renault Zoe's, their battery degradation was worse yeah. because they weren't keeping their battery temperatures in the happy Goldilocks zone. Yeah. So what is thermal management? Well, yes. that is good question. That's that my next question. Is coming back to you when you mentioned about your iPhone battery, for instance. Yeah, that this, this is knackered after like eighteen months. Correct. And do you know why? Because it gets hot. Because it gets hot. Now batteries, like like humans, like to be in a certain temperature zone. Anything between, say, you know, zero and 50 degrees, they're okay. But really, they're more happy around about the 20 degree zone. Yeah. Okay, so if we're warm and nice and comfortable, batteries are too. So that's what thermal management does. It's keeping the batteries within its happy zone. Yeah. And if you haven't got thermal management in your batteries, heating the batteries up above zero degrees or keeping it below, say, 40 degrees or whatever, then the batteries degrade quicker. Oh, okay. And that's why the early generation Nissan Leafs and things like that, which didn't have thermal management, degrade quicker and their battery lives you know, die quicker, if you like. And that's why it comes as a surprise to many people that electric cars have radiators. Uh, yes. To kind of yep, cool yep. for cooling. And yep. So stuff. the reason why I was hesitant there is the radiator is not just for the batteries. No. That's also cooling down the motor and inverter. Yep. So the motor and inverter in an electric car is very efficient. And when you're talking about inefficiencies, for instance, like a, a petrol car is around about, say, 20 to 30 percent efficient. That means that of the energy that you put in, 80 to 70 percent of that energy that you put in is lost to heat um, through the radiator, exhaust, noise, etc., etc. Yeah. So there's a lot of energy that's turned into heat yeah. in a petrol car. That's why you need a radiator. But even with an electric motor, which is 90 to 96 percent efficient, that still means that 10 to 4 percent of your energy that you're putting in is turned into heat. So you need a radiator to just keep that okay. cool. But it's like lukewarm yeah. rather than boiling, boiling scalding hot. hot. Okay. But you still need a radiator for um, batteries to keep them cool but you also need to heat them up in the winter time just to get them up to their most efficient, if you yeah. like. Um, now, a lot of modern electric cars, and anybody that's considering an electric car out there, I thoroughly recommend you try to get one that's got a heat pump in. Yeah. Because as we know, heat pumps are even more efficient at you know, taking energy and turning it into either heat or cooling, for instance. And that means that um, they're taking less energy out of the battery pack to be able to keep that temperature of the battery pack in its Goldilocks zone. So, top tip to anybody that's considering AVs, just ask the sales guy, has this got a heat pump in? Yeah, and if it, and has, if it has, big tick. then that's a good thing. Cool. So, summarize then, you're not saying these have an infinite life. Nope. They are gonna degrade over time, their, their efficiency is gonna go down. It's interesting, I was saying to you off camera, the, I had a Lexus EV, and they, they kind of say after 10 years, it's still gonna be around about 90% of its of its efficiency. Yeah, yeah. Um, so so it's, it's not 
it's not like, I know they're in a, a similar technology to what you find in an iPhone or a, a smartphone. But, the lithium but, based. Yeah, but don't think of it, oh, that's just like a big iPhone battery, because it's no. really not. Uh, and another thing that people get mixed up with is uh, Nike batteries of the 90s. Yeah. You know, when you had those cordless drills and after a year, they're like, oh my God, it's died in five minutes. Yeah. NICAD is not the same as lithium based batteries. And the other th interesting thing that's happening now is we're seeing more LFP batteries coming in, which LFP stands for lithium iron, not ion as in I-O-N, but mm -hmm. lithium iron phosphate. And those batteries are more stable and they uh, they last longer. So LFP batteries are even better. So the technology is always improving. Yeah. And uh, as I say, LFP batteries or cars with LFP batteries are another step forward in my mind. Yeah. Now, in terms of when you come to replace one of these, they aren't cheap things. No. No. So, I mean, what kind of you know for a, um, I guess it depends on the size of the battery pack in a car in the first place yeah but if you're buying it from a manufacturer it's a big amount of money but yeah. that's not something that the average person who buys an electric car is gonna have to worry about for quite a while right? yeah. and, and this is um, uh, something that runs into um, uh, warranty periods yeah. so electric cars have quite a long warranty period yeah. why because there's nothing really that goes wrong in the motors, really, yeah. you know, compared to all the thousands of moving parts in a petrol and diesel car, for instance. So they know they can warranty that drivetrain to the, you know, to the nth degree. And the battery packs are actually lasting a lot longer than people initially thought mm. back, you know, like 10 years ago, for instance, or even seven years ago. They're lasting a lot longer. So you're getting eight year warranty periods and things like that, which is, you know, you wouldn't normally see that in, you know, petrol and diesel land. No. Um, but yeah, after, you know, I don't know, 300,000 whatever miles, at some point you're going to say, hang on, my battery is now at, you know, 60, 70 percent what it used to be. And if you're doing local drives, that might still be OK. Yeah, yeah, but at okay. some point you might say, you know what, this battery has had it. I'm going to replace it. And yeah. at that point, then, yes, there's going to be a big chunk of change you're going to be forking out to change your battery. Why? Because it's the main part of the car. Yeah. It's your main <laughs> It's like replacing a roof on your, on your house. Yeah. You know, at some point, you're going to probably have to replace the roof and yeah. it's going to be very expensive, but it's going to be a long way out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like um, rethatching your cottage. There you go. Yeah, exactly. You haven't got a thatched cottage, have you? No. Nah. <laughs> nah. So, yeah, there is a big chunk of change that you'll need way into the distance yeah. um, to replace that battery pack. Um, and you can either replace it with a good second-hand one. For instance, if your, your old car engine went pop, yeah. Would you go to Jaguar and get a brand spanking new Jaguar engine to put in it? Yeah. Probably not. Yeah, yeah. You'd probably go to a specialist that does reconditioned engines or maybe even buy a, a second hand engine off eBay. Yeah. You do the same with electric. Yeah, yeah. So you don't need to go back to you know, Jaguar to buy a brand spanking new battery pack to put in your iPace. Yeah. So. Cool, okay. Uh, so. Actually, one more thing on that, interestingly enough, I had a conversation with a company that um, when we get bad batteries in, because we, you know, we repurpose some batteries like Tesla batteries, for instance, yeah. um, and VW ID yeah. four batteries oh, uh, wow. just in that pack there, and you know sometimes you get them in and through quality assurance tests that we do, some are not usable, so then you have to use, uh, get rid of them. So yeah. we have a company where we send the batteries to that recycle batteries, and I had an interesting conversation with a guy um, a couple of weeks ago, and said, "How's it going?" Not brilliant, he said. And do you know why? Because they can't get any uh, batteries. <laughs> He's got, got this... nothing to recycle. Yeah, that's how good batteries are, he was saying. It's like, you know, the, the downside of batteries being, you know, so good and lasting so long is the fact that they're struggling to get second-hand batteries. <laughs> oh so, you know, just a side yeah. note there that, yes, batteries can be recycled, by the yeah. way. You know, if anybody is going, oh, they can't be recycled. Oh, yes, they can. Yeah. And there's companies out there screaming for them. But yeah, just uh, an interesting uh, conversation I had with that company uh, last week. That's genius. So, okay, so then let's talk about how we kind of maybe help with the health of the battery in terms of best practice for charging. Because yep. the next comment I get um, is, um, oh, if you, if you use rapid chargers, yeah. so rapid DC charging, that, that's damaging to the battery. You, you should never charge a battery up to 100%. That's damaging to the battery. Damaging is... Uh, too aggressive word to use. Yeah. Okay. It, um, if you want, you know, bear in mind a manufacturer wouldn't allow you to do something that will damage the battery. No. Okay. So you know the battery management systems on these battery packs will 
prevent you from damaging a battery. Yeah. But there are ways, the same, um, you know, if you wanted to elongate the life cycle of an engine, don't redline it every time you change gear. Yeah. It's things like that, basically. Yeah. So redlining it every time you change gear is probably going to bring that life cycle of your engine down mm. again with a battery pack. Don't redline it all the way to full every time you're charging it up because it'll bring the life cycle of that ba battery pack down. So the usual thing that people say is keep it within the 20%, 80% range. You know, if you keep it within the 20% to 80% range, you will elongate the lifetime of that battery as much as it can be. Yeah. And supercharging, you know, the reason why supercharging um, can you know, bring the lifetime of a battery down, and, and it's not like, oh, you're gonna half the lifetime. No, you're not. You, you'll just bring it down. Again, redlining an, an engine every time you change gear is a good example. Yeah. You know? um, so but that's, we, what we, that's what you did when you were- yeah, just, a, don't, don't, car don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> but at least I could rebuild my race engine as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but with supercharging, what you're doing is you are putting a load of amps in really quickly, and therefore you're stressing the battery out. You know, not a huge amount, but stressing the battery out within its happy parameters. But the temperature is going up. Yeah. And any time you get heat cycles in anything in life, engines, etc., any time you get heat cycles and stuff, you're also you know reducing the the life cycle of that battery. So if you really want to um, you know get yeah, a million miles out of a battery pack, charge it up at home on a seven kilowatt charger, keep it within 20% and 80%, and you'll find that your you know, lifetime of that battery is way longer than you'd expect. Yeah. And most, most home chargers and or cars have the ability to set criteria as to what percentage you're gonna charge the car up to. Oh yeah. So you just, you don't, it's not like you have to guess and run out and unplug it at 80. You just tell the car, don't charge beyond 80%. Most whatever. cars have that feature as well. And also a lot of um, uh, smart chargers. Yeah. You know, I, I charge The one I plugged up. into today did. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, my I home, my home charger is an Omi uh, charger. And in that, I can set it to only charge up um, at nighttime on a cheap tariff. So I'm charging up now. Last year it was five pence per kilowatt hour which is insanely cheap. Uh, yeah. And now I think it's gone up to an insanely massive 7.5 pence per kilowatt hour. So I'm charging up my car 7.5 pence per kilowatt hour. Yeah. Um, and also my power wall and my house is driven off batteries. So all my house and cars are charged up, you know, between that time, which my, my electricity graph, if you like, is hilarious. Because there's, there's nothing, 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 and at midnight it goes, <laughs> yeah, and then yeah. at 4.30 in the morning it goes to nothing, and then it's off. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. the weirdest like, graph you'll ever see. So let's do the, the 20 to 80% thing as well. So when you're on a journey, I wanted to not bust a myth, but explain, and I've explained this on videos before, but you do it way better than I do, that first 20% and the last 20% of the charge takes longer than yeah. the middle 60%. Correct. Yeah. Explain why and what the because so when okay. when I'm driving home tonight, yep. the quickest way for me to get home if I need to charge is to just charge 20 to 80 percent, get on my way, then get to the next 20 to 80 percent, get on my way, rather than sitting there till I get to yeah. 100 percent. So to, uh, so the best way to describe it, right? So imagine a barrel of uh, water that you've got to fill up. Yeah. Okay. Now as it gets to the top, okay, and you've got a, like a uh, a fireman hose to fill it up, yeah. okay? But you're not allowed to spill any water over the top when it gets to full. So you'll start off with like loads of like water, full thing, and then as it gets to about 8%, you're getting up to the top now. Bear in mind you're not allowed to spill it, which means that in voltage world, you don't want it to go over a certain voltage yeah. in the cells. So you'll say, oh, hang on, turn it down, turn it down a bit, we're getting to the top, turn it in. down. Oh, it's getting really to the top now, turn it down a bit more, turn it down. So that means that up to 80%, it's really quick, and at 80 to 100%, it starts to get slower, 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 slower. So when you're supercharging, don't sit there thinking, oh, I'm gonna wait till it's 100%, because it'll get to 80% really quickly, and then it'll start to slow down. Once you get to 80%, 85%, get on your way again. Yeah, you just go. You only want to get to 100% the night before, when you're just about to do a long journey the next day, stick it on the home charger, set it to 100%, and by the time you wake up, it'll be good to go, but yeah. never get it to 100%. On the way up charged. yesterday, I sat on a DC charger and went to 100%, one, because it only took less than an hour, and that's how long I took to have my food. And also, I knew I was coming here, and we might want to, I wasn't gonna be able to charge last night, so there yeah. were reasons why I went to 100%, yeah. but otherwise, I knew it. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, people say, don't go to, uh, don't go to 0%, which, again, you know, just for the reasons I've already explained, it's never, 
a good idea to go down, uh, down to 0%, but you can, no problem at all. I'm, I'm, and I'm, I've done I'm, it many times. I've gone below 0%. I was going to say, a lot of cars, I did a thing with Toyota uh, earlier this year, and there, when it says zero, it's still got 10%. Oh, yeah. Just it's like fuel still, gauge. Yeah, there's still a bunch of, bunch of stuff in there. When we were in college, yeah. all those years ago, mate. Right? Yeah, mate, when, it, when uh, you could fill your car up for 10 quid. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> I used to fill my car up, um, yeah, for literally about 10 quid and drive all the way to Wales. Yeah. You know, on, on 10 quid, it's insane. Um, but anyway, we're back, back when things were black and white, we were in university. By the way, we were at university together. If you've not heard that story, but anyway, I won't bore you with it. This video is way longer than I was planning it to be. But the last very quick point yeah. is the final thing you get is, uh, oh, you know, what about the maintenance? What about motors? When they, when they fail, they're going to be loads of money to replace. They're, I mean, one of the benefits of converting classic cars to electric is you can use them as daily drivers because there's no maintenance yeah. reliability is like 100 percent maintenance is literally zero but that's the thing with electric motors there is so little maintenance and that's a massive saving yeah. if i had a bmw or a mercedes or whatever for those three years think how much money i would have had to have spent on servicing it yeah 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 you know um so yeah there's what two moving parts or very few moving parts in electric motor compared to an internal combustion engine that probably has a thousand moving parts yeah. with lubrication, filters to change, belts to change, oil changes, you know, heat cycles, all that's going on. Electric motor, you know, electromagnetism, bit of spinny spin and two bearings. That's, Happy a, good, that's a good description of finishing. Electromagnetic, a bit of spinny spin. A bit of spinny spin. Spinny yeah. spin, that's or technical. Or spinach as we call. Spinny, there, spinny spin, technical there, description. There's a, um, a, a stage that comes in every uh, kit that we ship out, and we've got three mini kits going out over there, two to the States, one to Australia. Yeah. And there's always the spinach moment. It's like Popeye. Yeah. We've got spinach! Yay! <laughs> that's when you spin the motor up for the first time and everything works. Amazing. Amazing. Mate, thank you for busting myths. Yeah, that's right, I'll always... bust myth all day for you, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that everybody would have switched off. <laughs> no, no, it, honestly, it's just, it's, you can go back in the comments and you go, that's not right, but, the, and I'm sure there will still be people who, who kind of go, oh, you're not right there. Well, but, so just, it's just fact. As a coverall, yeah. what I normally say to anybody is don't listen to people with opinion, listen to people with experience. Yeah. So anybody out there that says, oh, this, that, and the other about electric cars, most of them don't have an electric car. Yeah. So if anybody's considering driving an electric car, don't listen to everybody that has an opinion. Go and speak to people that have an electric car. And there's enough people out there that have electric cars. Yeah. So, you know, talk to people with experience rather than opinion. That's my... That's why I drove to Wales, mate, because you're the most experienced person I know. <laughs> there you go. And I always have an opinion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Big style. Anyway, big thanks to Moggy for giving me his time. Um, head over to electric classic cars give them a sub on youtube because they do some ridiculous things here there are some unbelievable i can see a jensen interceptor i can see your ridiculous car over there yeah your funk up car I, I, this is what uh, i'm in this weekend nobody can see what we're pointing at yeah, now i'll put really some b-roll over the, that the, camper van the, the camper van four-wheel yeah. drive synchro um, and taking that out this there's weekend a tesla rossa over there yeah, there's, two. There's, there's two there's another one over there there's your yeah mega. So. mega anyway if you enjoyed that give me a thumbs up comments below are always welcome and if you haven't done so already please subscribe to petrol ped and electric classic cars for plenty more content to come and we'll see you in the next film guys and take care bye bye safe <laughs>